I'm not short of eyepieces for different situations and different telescopes. But when you use the uh, eyepiece for planetary and uh, moon observation or even double star observation, first you use a finder eyepiece, then you have to use something uh, more powerful with a higher magnification and lower focal length. And uh, that means uh, you have to change the eyepiece. And that is where the, uh, you know, uh, things doesn't go right always. Uh, during the change of the eyepiece, you may lose actually the target. So one way to circumnavigate around that problem is to use a eyepiece turret. Another way is that instead of uh, using several eyepieces and change them, use eyepiece turret in combination with something like a zoom eyepiece. And here I have a zoom eyepiece. This is for planetary viewing. I have zoom eyepiece for the higher range. This is for lower range, lower focal range. So let's just open it and see. So let's see what is inside this package. I just received it today with a special delivery for Saturday. Okay, nicely packed. Hmm, this looks like a filter, probably is a gift, I didn't order a filter, so it must be a gift. Sometimes, you know, especially the Chinese manufacturers give you such things. This is SV Boni model SV215, zoom eyepiece. Yeah. Oh, that's a six element, three millimeter to eight millimeter planetary, lunar planetary eyepiece. The package is quite hefty, like a teleview. <laughs> oh, I'm excited to open this now. Let's just see. Oh, sponge. Black one, that's, that looks premium. <laughs> oh, a cleaning cloth. That's a nice thing to use. Um, uh, it's important for me because um, they say you have to use a butter uh, cleaning cloth, which is actually, it was 15 pound when I bought it, but it must be more now. And now this is free coming to you. They don't leave a mark on the thing and they don't scratch it. Oh, it's like Teleview, they put it also inside a plastic wrapping. And of course, Teleview, I don't think it has a foam. It has a foam shape around it. So. Just put the box away. Okay, the iPad looks quite hefty and heavy. Oh, it's full metal almost. The rubber eye cup is soft and nice to touch. This one that is, uh, you know, they're plastic, these ones, but that is rubber. And the lower one also. Let me just remove the eye caps. And the field cap also. Looks quite nice feel. It has a nice trunk and feel to it. It almost reminds me of uh, uh, my Vixen HR. Let me just bring that and just put it beside it. Hmm. I must say it looks more elegant than the Vixen. The range of it is 3 to 8 mm. This is 2.4. The next uh, increment for this was 3 mm, I think. 
Let me compare it with the one of those Takahashi's that I have. That is a seven and a half millimeter, of course. Let's just see the shape of it. Okay, this is the Takahashi seven and a half millimeter. This also has up to the eight millimeter. So this looks slightly heavier, and the build quality to me looks very close. This has a dentation for clamping holding the eyepiece in the eyepiece holder this doesn't have that it is smooth let me compare it with the Teleview Nagler 5 and 7 okay this is the um, SV Bonnie 3.328 millimeter zoom and this is the Nagler Teleview Nagler 7 millimeter this is the original one and this is the Nagler 5 millimeter type 6 this is a slightly heavier than that so whatever it has metal and glass is more than what the Nagler has in this range although it is looking smaller than both of them so this is my current best eyepiece I have all these other eyepieces Naglers and uh, uh, Takahashi's and Pentax I found this one is very similar to what you expect from a perfect eyepiece. It shows best contrast, best details I can see than the planet Jupiter I'm talking about. And everything in this one, surprisingly, is the better than whatever uh, those other eyepieces can deliver. So this is my number one best eyepiece at the moment, despite all the others being probably up to 10 times more expensive than this so if this sv bonnie zoom can be anything compared to that um i'll be really delighted because that means the range of it instead of being from eight only i don't have the five millimeter of this i can go from eight to seven uh, six five and four and three that means i will have a whole range of this in just one package and uh, I'm not you know, a brand uh, kind of a snob person. Um, so I get the best of every range. And I found that 25 millimeter TMB Planetary, mm, TMB Optical Planetary 2, 25 millimeter one is really good. I found this is actually better than that uh, uh, Vixen. Uh, HR 2.4 millimeter. I tested it on the planet Mars. This was better. So uh, this is this cost me probably around 19 pound or something like that. It was even cheaper before that. And uh, it has all the mechanics that you can expect. I, you know, the eye guard can rise and everything. It's quite have a heft. Made in China, but very good quality. And I was surprised. So I'm 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 picking the best from every every range of eyepieces. As you can see, I have I have no limit in the quality eyepieces. I'm not shy of spending for it if I can, and if it is available. But when it comes to view, I have uh, I pick the best, uh, and I'm 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 not uh, going for something which is a little bit inferior. If I have the best, I will go for it if it is available. Okay, I chose this eyepiece after reading a lot of reviews about it, especially the Ernest Maratovich, uh, um, who is the only person actually who tests, uh, bench tests the eyepieces. Uh, he's a Russian, he has a Russian actually forum, but uh, if you open it in Google Chrome, you can actually translate it into English and understand what he says. He had a pre-production of this tested and also the post-production uh, tested also. And his uh, opinion was that it is as good as the Nagler in many ways. And many other people have also mentioned that. And uh, But at the end of the day, I want to be my own judge on this. So I will be testing it during the daytime and in the nighttime. With all the eyepieces that I have, I will try to achieve a final result. At the moment, I just want to sh look at it, unbox it, look at it, mechanics and everything. So let's just see if I can... Uh, free my hand. So now I put the uh, 
camera on the tripod I'm using both hands so let's see how it works actually oh this is what you turn and it has a good feel oh so that's the way the zoom works it rises so I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Every one millimeter we have a click. And of course nothing can stop you from using it in between, for example, seven and a half. So in this way I can compare it with the seven and a half millimeter Takahashi, which I have there. So and I've read reviews that people were saying it is stiff. I don't think this is stiff. It's quite actually nice and smooth. And reassuring click. Let me just don't talk. You can hear. Nice click sound you can hear even in the dark. That's really helpful. So that's really good, uh, so, uh, and it it is chunky. So this part is big enough that actually my fingers can have a grip and turn it on. And these increments of the one millimeter uh, are just where this click acts. So you know that, but. I can use it at any range, 4.2 probably here, or if I want 4.8, um, like for example, or 4.7, 4.8, like the old Nagler, uh, 4.8, or uh, 4.7 for the Explore Scientific, I can compare it with that. That's nice. Let's see what happens when we actually change in this zoom. What happens at the bottom of the eyepiece? Oh, it goes in. When it is at this uh, highest uh, focal length, this is actually quite in. And when I change it to seven, it comes toward the end. And when I go toward the five, I've just from seven again to six, five, four three so that's a tree i must say that this ring i like it this is a, a something that they put to block the stray light and i've i've seen only this kind of ring in very premium ones like the one in the uh, vixen hr i will try to show it to you yeah this is a vixen hr and this is a vixen hr in the vixen hr you can actually turn it on and remove it so i mean i asked once to is it possible the vixen sells me this and the european distributor of this is bother and being german they were very stingy and they don't replace or they don't give you anything you know they just say that is it and now it is discontinued uh, i must say i didn't find this particularly you know powerful or sharp or anything the narrow field of view was really bothering me a lot i didn't use it as much this cost me around 250 or something it is discontinued probably is no more this one i have paid it was 119 and i think uh, they gave me a discount of 105 pound yeah offer and counter offer it depends on the time you know the if you buy it from china i noticed that you can pay up to 200 pound or something even more than that and it depends on the season and the time of the year it's like anything else you know for example when there is a long period of rain in the uk <laughs> the prices go down probably even the second hand ones and when the we have clear sky like 2022 summer was every night or when during the lockdown 2020 covid19 lockdown we had uh, you know very good weather and the prices were going up. I was lucky that I got these things just before those lockdowns or when they were just 
clicking in and people were just trying to find a hobby. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so this cost me 250, this cost me 105. So um, the price range is really significant. This is less than half the price. Okay, I have now this laser pointer, which uh, you have to be careful, don't shine it into anyone's eye. I will just let you see, this is a laser. I'm just doing it just to see how many reflections I can see. At least one, two, probably more even if I count it. One, two, three, four, five I can see. This and how many I see? Um, I'm not sure really I see anything proper here. The best side was this side, so I was able to count five. So, yeah, five reflections I can see. I'm not sure you can see as much as uh, as good as I can see, but there are five reflections. One, two, three, four, five. There are multiple reflections that you also see in the because this is not exactly point source, but that's enough to tell me that this has probably five elements or five surfaces that are reflective. Um, there is a slight uh, coating of the. Um, slightly reddish and a slightly green tinge and on this side I don't see much but anyway it's a slightly green if I go close what do I see here I must say, I like the look of it. <laughs> you know, SV Bonnie, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with the quality because the SV Bonnie was for me uh, the name that I knew with this aspheric, excellent eyepiece, very inexpensive, very cheap actually, I should say. I bought, uh, I think, six of this <laughs> because it was so cheap for Bonnie View. So this is 23 millimeter, this is the 4 millimeter, and this is the 10 millimeter one. They were really sharp on the moon. Probably one of the sharpest I've seen. Comparable, slightly a tag, a tad less than the Takahashi, which is this one. Takahashi cost, if you get, because this is now discontinued also, uh, probably 10 times more. And these were um, the earliest of the SV ponies that I knew. Then you see these ones, and you see that they have really gone a long way designing this and then manufacturing it and then sending for reviewers to actually bench test it. Uh, this is really uh, really something, an achievement for them. And we know that there is a other zooms in this range. Teleview has Nagler, but the Nagler has a narrower field of view. And the trick that they have done is to avoid the, you know, a slightly edge of the field can be uh, fuzzy in many eyepieces, including theirs. They have uh, restricted it less than 50 degrees it is. In this one, the field of view is 56. And, uh, and you can actually turn it down also this and for the eye relief and uh, other things this rubber is really good quality it's just reassuring anyway and uh, in this one uh, they have the same view i've read that people say it has a similar view provides to with a similar view to nagler and uh, i just like to test it for myself more, more as i told my best eyepiece and uh, you know, free being free from any you know judgment about the brand or being brand snob or anything. I found this one has the best views on the Jupiter and Saturn. I have the other eyepieces and I have tested them. I've compared them. This is Nagler, uh, probably not a very good one. Uh, I have, for example, this also Nagler clone, a seven millimeter, is a Nirvana. And also, 
uh, this is 16 millimeter one, I have four millimeter one also. Again, uh, I didn't like the four millimeter much on the uh, planet Jupiter. It was good in rare occasions, but I preferred much the seven millimeter one. So seven millimeter, eight millimeter was a sweet spot for me. So I'm really curious now to know if this Nagler, uh, this um, SV Boni 3.8 millimeter zoom is able actually at the eight millimeter to compete with this, and then uh, can it go down to keep the quality uh, down the line? So I will do a daylight test. It's a bit rainy outside. It just comes. We have shower, but this really nice turns up and down so easy the thing is that when you put it in the you know eyepiece holder you have to make sure it is tight so you can when you turn it with any zoom it is like that so when you turn it you're actually not turning the whole eyepiece this section turns i have seen very stiff ones like this um presser zeven zeven one uh, which is um, to my experience it is a it is not bad the field of view gets narrow with this when you go to higher uh, focal length but then turning the thing is I have to really with both hands you use a lot of force to turn this when we when you see this uh, SV Boni zoom it's quite easy you know turning it and it makes that click it's like sounds premium <laughs> Where well, this one you can see that uh, never was able actually to turn it really any good. I have a better one for the uh, spotting scope, but I use it for telescope. And this is around two hundred pound. But the problem with this is that you can you can have is easy to turn. It's heavier, bigger, much bigger actually compared to size. This is of course. Uh, I think it goes from the something like 8 to 9 millimeter to 24 but again the field of view gets narrower with this at the same time you don't have that reassuring click 30 times doesn't have click 20 times doesn't have click so you just have to you know, feel that this is the end then go a little bit get a little bit a little bit like that and you, of course you see visually what is happening but uh, with this eyepiece, you can actually have. So you know, please with this, so easy. So I think that why people some make some comment that I mean the reviews. I mean in the cloudy nights and elsewhere say it is not easy to turn it. I think this is easy. Yeah. Anyway, we know in the car industry that uh, Volkswagen pays a lot to, <laughs> to car reviewers to actually. You know, put the Volkswagen or Audi, all that they are the same. For example, Volkswagen Golf is the same as a Volkswagen, uh, as same as a Ford Focus or <laughs> Nissan uh, um, Pulsar. They are the same car and the same chassis, everything the same. The Japanese car, you get more options and uh, free options. The Volkswagen, you don't get those options or technology as much. But yet, they promote it all the time because they pay for them. So I'm going to see, I'm waiting to see how this performs compared to the other eyepieces that I have. Okay, this is the daytime testing of the SV Boni 3.328 millimeter zoom. And uh, I'm using the Dobsonian mount of the Skywatcher Flex Tube 130 and the Skywatcher uh, ED80 Pro series, the gold version, and the uh, diagonal is this the uh, dielectric diagonal. Let's just see how it is the view. I'm, I will be looking at those flowers in the hanging basket. So I start by the eight millimeter setting. Okay, I'm now using the 8mm setting and this is the image you can see. Okay. 
I'm now at the 7 millimeter setting. As you can see, I've not changed the focus at all. The field of view is quite large. Okay, I have now changed it to 6 millimeter, and let's see how is the view through this 6 millimeter. I'm now using the 6 millimeter setting and I've not changed the focus at all. This is this IP's uh, settings are all parafocal so far. So from 8 to 7 and to 6 now I've not changed the focus at all. Now I have changed it to 5 millimeter and it's very easy actually to turn it. It's very easy. And it also stays. It's, it's reassuring. You can hear the click also. Now my, I am at the 5mm setting, I have not changed the focus, it's parafocal with the 8, 7, 6 also. I have not changed it to 4mm and I am going to test it on this set. So I am now at the 4mm, the magnification is very high. If I change the focus, I will come at different parts of it into focus. Is is because the objects, uh, uh, different parts have, are at a different distance. So the best test for this probably will be during the night when I'm observing something which relatively to our eyes are flat, like uh, planet Jupiter. And this has a significant distance between the front of the flower and the back, those hairy bits. Now I'm at the 3 millimeter setting and it really reassuringly clicks and um, you know that it is there. Let me just uh, show you the view. This is the view. Let me just see if I can change the focus slightly. Yeah, when I change the focus, those hairs which I want to bring in focus they come into focus. It's slightly, not much. It's slightly, I just moved it. But uh, I can bring the different parts into focus by just going a little bit back or forward. So I can bring different details uh, because this is a 3D object. I can bring different parts into focus by slightly changing the uh, with the focus knob the length of the um, focal length slightly going back and forward this is a 3d object so the flower is a little bit closer than those hairy bits on the stem of the old spent flowers so they all don't come at the same distance The field of view, I feel a little bit slightly narrower here than what it was at the up to six, so up to five probably, yeah. Or maybe I'm not uh, right on that. Anyway, you will see better when you're watching it. So, so far so good. Let me just change it immediately to seven and a half and then change to seven and a half Takahashi. Now I'm in the 7.5mm setting on this, so I will go and show you, then I will bring the Takashi. The field of view definitely is uh, bigger when you are at the, near the 8mm. This is 7.5 view, and you can see beautiful details visible. Let me just immediately change to Takashi. This is the 7.5 um, multi-coated uh, LE. Uh, eyepiece of Takashi is a construction wise it is a very similar in the image quality to a orthoscopic eyepiece so this is the focus of a seven and a half millimeter Takahashi you be the judge the lighting condition has not changed much so um, If, um, I have to see it again, compare. I will just go back immediately to 7.5mm um, zoom. 
Now I'm using the SV Boni 3 to 8 millimeter eyepiece, and this is the 7.5 millimeter setting. Uh, I feel the field of view. Uh, I feel the field of view is a little bit bigger, and uh, the image is very similar. Or, yeah, they are very similar. Probably I feel this one is a little bit better slightly. Okay, this is the Takahashi. Yeah, you be the judge. I don't think there are any difference. Other than what can be said about, you know, you may be manually bringing one to better focus. But visually, I don't see any difference. I would go back again to 7.5 mm. Yeah, I'm back in the um, SV Bonnie Zoom 7.5 mm. I don't think I see any difference. The image quality is the same. And that Takahashi is the sharpest eyepiece I've seen on the moon, especially on the moon. Better than Nagler, definitely. I've tested it. I have a video about that. Nagler 7 mm. Definitely the center of the view is really good. I wish the fly was there when the, I was using Takashi. Let me just change it before the fly flies. Okay, now I'm with the Takashi. Yeah. I feel the edge of the view is a little bit slightly clearer here. Before that fly flies again, I will put the zoom back. Yeah, I think that they're very similar at the edge. This is now the um, seven and a half millimeter SV Bonnie zoom. It's a seven and a half millimeters. I don't see any difference. They're all the same. I think they are the same. Just to show you, this is SV Bonnie. Yeah? Yeah. And I'm using the seven and a half millimeter setting. I'm using now the 8mm setting of the uh, SV Bonnie zoom and let's just see the view. Okay, this is the view. The fly unfortunately went. Let me go for the Stargard 8mm, my best planetary eyepiece in my experience on the planet Jupiter. Okay, this is the Stargard ED 8mm. Let's compare it with the view we had through the zoom. Okay, this is the view through the uh, Stargard ED, and our fly came back. Let me bring the fly into focus. As you can see, the field of view on this one is bigger. It's, I think, 66 or 62 degrees against the 56 of the SV Boni and uh, 52 degrees of the Takahashi. Okay, I'm back in the SV Boni uh, zoom. This is the 8 millimeter setting. Yeah, I think that they're comparable. Unfortunately, a fly has not cooperated. It has gone. Uh, but anyway, the view is really nice. I like it. Nice flowers, you know, geranium. Grow geranium. <laughs> All the summer we have some flower. I'm holding, hoping that the fly will come back. Oh no, he's here, down there. That's it. We are seeing the fly in the focus. Yeah, is a fly. It's a different fly anyway. With a, a winged uh, ant, probably, to the 7 o'clock in the image. I must say I'm really pleased with this uh, eyepiece. Let me just change the with one hand and two fingers. If I can change the setting. Of course, I'll make sure this is tight. Then, let me turn it so in a way that you will see the red dot there. Okay, this is tight now. Easy to turn. Oh, I like that click. Ooh, you can listen to that click.
I don't know why people say it's stiff. It's not stiff at all. <laughs> Get it. I'm just doing two fingers, dude. And it just, you know, when it reaches there, it just, as if there is a force there, it clicks into space. Falls into a uh -huh, slot. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, that's really good. I really like that. This is really nice. <laughs> this is a, what you have seen there. This is the review. Nice. Let's go back to the eight. Yeah. I like this telescope and this eyepiece on this. Really good. It works, uh, I think it's matching with the Takahashi and even my Stargate 8mm. Um, what I especially liked when I was making this video was that I could rest the uh, uh, camera on this uh, rubber eye guard. It is not flimsy, it's strong enough to actually leave it there, lean on it. Oh, lovely. And I can lift it again. And it keeps its shape. But at the same time, it's easy to pull it down if you want. It's thick enough for all of that activity you want. Oh, this is really good quality. I've loosened it so I can take it out. Amazing. I love this. I think this is worth, <laughs> worth the, more than this. It definitely saves me, you know, the... If, definitely, if I had this, you know, I would not buy all of the other eyepieces. <laughs> this one was enough for me. <laughs> it has a, from 8mm, I would have just got another zoom. Or a 25mm eyepiece, plus or anything. Then this was giving me 3 to 8. I could easily use it for travel, or for outreach, or for my own pleasure, because I, I showed you this is equal to the best premium eyepiece that I have. Oh, by the way, at the end, I just came to put back the telescope and eyepieces. I noticed this looks like a good quality filter, so I opened it. The box of it is quality even. Let me just bring it out and just show you how it looks. Okay, this is the mode filter. Oh, amazing. One and a quarter inch mode filter. Mode filter. And you can see that on its own probably, yeah, it's around 20 pounds. It has a premium uh, packaging and uh, of course the test will be under the moon. So I'm waiting for a full moon, just go and test it probably. And this is, the yeah, I got it from the eBay, this eyepiece. And uh, it's the from UK stock, so it's just, I ordered it by the night and uh, uh, yeah it was delivered to me very quick um, ordered by the around 22 or 10 p.m. in the night of the Thursday and the morning of the Saturday it was here very quick UK delivery very quick <clears throat> I'll give you the link where I actually got this where probably they have it at this price I've not never seen anywhere this price this is was this was the best cheapest price I could get and I got a um, quality moon filter for free also uh, it depends of course if they have it you know the stock is available yet or not